Hello guys and welcome to the Game Week 30 Scouting for Goals video. I'm Oscar and I'll show you my process when looking up stats from the Fantasy Football Scout members area. Let's move on to your Twitter questions and see how the stats can help us arrive at a logical answer for each question. Marcus Chia asks me who to start between Juan Bisaka, Diaz and Cresswell. This seems like a nice problem to have. First off, let's say that Diaz upside isn't massive and Leicester are good, so I will rule him out straight away actually. Let's take a look at one of my favorite public stats tables, Dusra's dodgy defenses. It shows that West Ham's opponent Wolves are second worst for big chances conceded and worst for goal attempts in box conceded. They are seventh from bottom in headed goal attempts conceded, which will benefit Cresswell since he makes a lot of great crosses for his fellow defenders and Antonio to head the ball in. So Cresswell should have a decent chance for an assist in this game. West Ham are fourth best in the big chances conceded department and have conceded four goals in their last three games, but they conceded three of those in the same game. If we look at the goal threat table under team stats, we see that Brighton and Wolves are neck and neck and when it comes to goal attempts, as well as big chances total. All in all, I would lean towards Cresswell since he has a higher upside, but it's close between him and Wan-Bissaka. Brighton are weak against top teams historically and Manchester United clean sheets form is good with four in a row. Next question is from my little bully. Fixture swing, we get a lot of good threads and pod talks about players to target, but who do we drop? Manchester City assets, they blank in 33 and are quite pricey and will also suffer from Pep Roulette since they target the Champions League. Gundogan only has one goal and one assist in his last five. It seems like he is now returning in line with his price at the moment and the risk is he might get less minutes when they are focusing on the Champions League. Aston Villa assets are annoying because they will have a double game week. Target could be a fine hold if you have an okay way to rotate him, but the other Aston Villa players could definitely be dropped. No one should be dropping Leeds assets, however, because they played Sheffield, but after that one, losing one of them would make sense with those terrible next three fixtures of Manchester City, Liverpool, Manchester United, if you want to target someone with high upside in those weeks, then dropping Bamford or Rafinha for that tough run should not punish you too much. Bale could be okay to drop as well long term, I think. I'm going to hold him and hope he plays in game week 30. But as I said, long term, he's a sell considering his limited minutes. I think West Ham's fixtures are very good. You can bench them versus Chelsea and Leicester. And apart from that, the fixtures are great. I wouldn't sell any of them if you are able to rotate them in the tougher fixtures. Now let's take a look at the public stats table called goals imminent to see if someone we are considering dropping has been unlucky. Rafinha stands out to me with 10 goal attempts last four games with two big chances and one goal. Big hitters Salah and Sterling are shown here and it's pretty crazy that Sterling has missed four of his last five big chances, but that's arguably a part of his game. The question is if you believe in form, because then these players should be out of your team since they are not converting like they should. But if you instead think that they might regress to normal, then this table is useful to see who is due a goal as the table name suggests. Watkins, as we see here, for instance, has had no big chances, but is racking up a lot of goal attempts despite Grealish absence. So Watkins might still come good. Next Twitter question, Manchester City defender against Leicester. Regarding Manchester City defenders this week, it's not a big deal how you want to do it. You could play Cancelo, for instance. I wouldn't be as excited about starting a central defender. With that said, there are okay options. It's just that there are many others that I prefer ahead of them this week. Gundogan has arguably higher ceiling than the defenders. So if you are choosing between those assets, I am currently leaning towards Gundogan. Looking at the team stats table in terms of defense, City have conceded six goals last five games and their clean sheet form has been a bit more normal lately. And if we look at expected goals conceded, they have exactly six goals. So they have deserved this score, but at the same time, they are fourth best in shots conceded. Looking at the expected stats table for teams, Leicester have 6.43 in expected goals last four, but over four of those came in the same game. So they haven't been great in the other games and Barnes and Madison's absence are really hurting them. And that's an argument for playing Manchester City defender. Monte Curdi asks, Aspilicueta, is he better than Rudiger? Well, Rudiger has played eight out of 10 under Tuchel, while Aspilicueta has played all of them. 
Aspilicueta has one goal and one assist the entire season, while Rudiger has got nothing to show for. If you're asking me who I think will score the most points from now until the end of the season, then yes, it's Aspi. But the massive difference in value should really help your team a lot. Aspi isn't really a points player. He'll probably play one or two more games than Rudiger, but as long as you have a bench, then Rudiger should be the better option. Just remember to check if Thiago Silva might be back, because that could change things. Looking at Dusra's wingback wonders, Aspi doesn't even appear over the last four game weeks, which means he has created less chances than three and he has had less crosses than four. Last Twitter question, should I get Arsenal defenders? They have nice fixtures. My answer to that is no, they have not kept a clean sheet in their last eight games. However, their expected goals against is 7th best in the league sorting by all season, which can be seen in the expected table under team stats. We know that they make a lot of individual mistakes, but it seems to be on a consistent level. There's a bit of rotation of the fullbacks as well, which isn't very nice, and I would not pick an Arsenal defender, but if I was to choose one, I guess it would be Tierney, because unlike Aspi, Tierney do show up in the wingback wonders table and he actually has two goal attempts which is joint top and he is also second highest in chances created. Thanks for watching these tools can be found on fantasy football's website and consider subscribing to this youtube channel for more content like this. Good luck this game week.